So, Lawrence, uh, you made a film called Prince and the Showgirl, which you directed and acted in with Marilyn Monroe. What yes. was she like to work with? Well, she was a very curious little person. She was a... There's a proper word for it, but I think it always sounds very horrid. She was a divided personality. She... When I first met her, I thought she was the most enchanting thing I'd ever met in my life. And it was impossible then, when she was like that. And she was like that in ordinary life. It was impossible not really to fall a little bit in love with her, absolutely at first meeting. And uh, I was looking forward madly to working with her because uh, I admired her so much. I thought she was a witty actress as well as being so ravishingly lovely. And um, I was longing to do a film with somebody like that. And it was a very exciting prospect for me, but it, it didn't work out to be either exciting or enjoyable. And I found out the reason for this later. She was always late, always late, sometimes four hours late. And that obviously isn't just being naughty. That's obviously something that's a sort of uh, something chronic. I mean, that's a, a problem, that is. Uh, she would just, uh, she'd say, just a minute, I, I, I have to be excused for a minute. And I'd know it would be an hour and a half before I got her back. She was marvellous at just saying a very simple little line of about seven words, and she could do it as nobody else could do that. Terence Rattigan wrote the thing, wrote it. He wrote comic literature. He wrote a beginning, a middle, and an end. A joke, a joke, a joke, a joke, and a ba-bum joke at the end. And that had to be... You had to build that. You had to architect that. And she couldn't understand that sort of thing. She'd been through the, 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 the um, you know, the, the studio school in New York, and uh, she'd got her little head filled with all sorts of ideas I don't think she could cope with about realism. And she'd never thought about realism in her little younger days at all when she first hit the screen with such a splash and everybody fell all over the aisles for her. She wasn't thinking about realism or any style or anything of the kind. She was just herself, and what she had to give was just that. Now, that precious thing, I think, was spoiled by people talking big to her and giving her all sorts of intellectual ideas that she simply couldn't cope with, but yet she tried to because she was just married to Arthur Miller, who, after all, is a big intellectual. And so it was a problem, and she was a very terribly new phrase, I know, mixed-up kid at the time, uh, and um, it, it was a very painful thing. It was rather humiliating she she would uh, she wouldn't know how humiliating she was being to a person she took the whole of one morning making the first scene and she couldn't remember it and uh, i remember her she had a mentor with her a sort of guide a spiritual comforter and guide that came from the uh, departments of this sanctified kind of theatre that exists in New York, who's, I heard her say, now Marilyn, all you've got to think of is Coca-Cola and Frankie Sinatra. <laughs>